Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Tuesday, January 26th, and with two coronavirus updates today at both a state and national level, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, today was the funeral for the late Toledo police officer, Brandon Stalker. The 24-year-old was shot and killed while working perimeter security at a standoff last Monday. At 10 a.m., the service began with a live performance of Amazing Grace, followed by words from Stalker's close friend and unofficial little brother, Lance Corporal Noah Zimmerman. As a lot of us may know, he would have taken the time out of his day to help anyone that needed it, no matter who you were. Also sharing words were Toledo Mayor Wade Kapsikavich, Toledo Police Chief George Crawl, and North Point Church Senior Pastor Brad Wotring, who read comments from Brandon's fiance, Ashley Omer. I felt a heartbreak I never knew possible. I should be planning our wedding, but instead, I found myself planning his funeral. Just before noon, the procession for Officer Stalker began. The route was lined with American flags and people from across the state who wished to honor the fallen officer. An hour later, the funeral procession entered Toledo Memorial Park, where Officer Brandon Stalker was ultimately laid to rest in a private ceremony. And while the city mourns the loss of Officer Stalker, today marks seven years since Toledo firefighters Steve Machinsky and Jamie Dickman were also killed in the line of duty. Machinsky and Dickman were killed battling a fire at 528 Magnolia Street in North Toledo on January 26, 2014. The owner of the building actually started the fire himself, and during his 2017 trial, he was found guilty of two counts of involuntary manslaughter and two counts of aggravated arson, and was ultimately sentenced to 20 years in prison. Machinsky and Dickman have been honored throughout the years for their sacrifice, and this year is no different. The historic Church of St. Patrick will be holding a memorial service in honor of the two fallen firefighters tomorrow at 5.30. But let's switch gears a little bit here and talk about our weather. We did get a little bit of snow today with some slick roads, but it looks like another storm system is on the way for the weekend. But this time, temperatures are going to be a bit warmer. But don't take it from me. Let's hear it from First Alert meteorologist Robert Shields. Well, I talk about this a lot. Tonight is a setup for a slip and fall accident. Today, temperatures have come well above freezing in a lot of spots here and across the Toledo area. There has been some snow and ice accumulation. It's melting now, but watch the temperature this evening. It will fall into the 20s pretty quickly, so icy spots are going to develop. They're going to develop on sidewalks and driveways, and you want to be careful out tonight and again tomorrow morning. The next three days are going to be a cold setting. The weekend will have warmer days, but also some wet weather it looks like coming in right on the weekend. The next three days though should be dry and though this is cold, it's really near normal right for late January. Highs will be around 30 to 32 and a couple low temperatures here are going to slip down into the teens. And we got another coronavirus update from Governor Mike DeWine today, so I'm going to walk you through a few key points of note here. First up, the governor unveiled new criteria the state will be using to end the statewide curfew and what his team is really zeroing in on is the the daily number of total COVID-19 patients in our state's hospitals. So for seven straight days, the total number of COVID-19 patients is below 3,500. The state will go to an 11 p.m. curfew for at least two weeks. If hospitalizations drop below 3,000 for seven consecutive days, the state will move to a midnight curfew for at least two weeks. And if for seven consecutive days, the number of COVID-19 patients in Ohio hospitals drops below 2,500, state leaders will remove the curfew. So far, there have been six straight days with that number below 3,500. So the adjustment to that curfew could come as early as Thursday. But now let's talk about vaccine doses. In the beginning of the vaccination process, the federal government required Ohio to set aside enough doses to give a shot to every nursing home resident and staff member in the state. Now, not everyone within these facilities has opted to get the vaccine. In fact, a large number of staff members have chosen not to be vaccinated. So at the end, the state will have a good amount of leftover doses. Those extra doses were not supposed to be up for grabs until March, but today, DeWine announced he was granted approval to dive into that stock a little bit early. So over the next two weeks, the state will have a total of 77,000 additional 
doses to give out to the community, which is vital because right now there's a scarcity and every week more and more Ohioans are qualifying to get their shot, which will soon include school staff. In fact, Cincinnati Public Schools is getting a jump start on the February 1st start date and is expected to receive its first round of shots later this week. Now, DeWine said that not all schools will get their first shot on February 1st, and right now no schools in Northwest Ohio are scheduled for that day, but the goal is to provide every interested school with its first batch of doses by the end of the month. The schools that will be getting the vaccine Monday have already been notified and the schools that haven't will be contacted by Friday. And as the age requirement expands to include more seniors every week, Dwine is trying to make the vaccine more accessible. Starting February 8th, state health officials will begin taking the vaccine directly into affordable senior housing locations. And those doses will then be distributed through on-site clinics. Basically, these clinics are aimed at easing the burden for many seniors who are having trouble with the registration process and arranging transportation. In a nutshell, here's how it's going to work. In advance of the clinic day, the state will provide resource materials that will educate residents about the vaccine that will provide information on the date, the location, the time of the clinic, and it will help people actually register and sign up for an appointment. But we're expecting more detailed information on that process as that February 8th date approaches. And President Joe Biden announced today plans to ramp up vaccinations in the U.S. with plans to deliver enough doses to protect 300 million Americans by the end of the summer. Biden said the federal government will be purchasing an additional 100 million doses each of the two approved coronavirus vaccines. So along with existing purchases, the White House expects to be able to deliver enough of the two dose regimens to states to vaccinate those 300 million people. Plus more vaccine doses could be available if federal scientists approve a single dose vaccine from Johnson & Johnson, which is expected to seek emergency authorization in the coming weeks. Plus, the new administration is planning a roughly 16% boost in deliveries to states over the next three weeks. And this comes following complaints about shortages so severe that some vaccination sites around the U.S. had to cancel tens of thousands of appointments with people seeking their first shot. And if Biden's team has promised more openness about their approach to the pandemic, saying they plan to hold press briefings three times a week starting tomorrow. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen, and now you are in the loop.